Hello, and thank you for joining us today for our webinar showcasing you during the ever-changing hiring process, part two of our personal development series. My name is Kelly Blount, and I'm the Program Marketing Specialist here at General Electric Credit Union. We're so glad you've joined us as we have a great discussion planned for you, and we wanted to thank you all for tuning in from the comfort of wherever you are joining us from today. And with that, I'd like to turn things over to today's guest speaker, GECU's very own Marissa Van Vranken, to introduce herself and take us through today's content. Thanks, Kelly. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Marissa Van Vranken, and I am the Vice President of Talent Acquisition here at General Electric Credit Union, and I am extremely excited to be with you all today uh, to talk about something that is quite active in my day-to-day, -day, which is the interviewing and hiring process. Um, so I know there's uh, thousands of articles and resources out there to help you prepare and tackle for the interview and hiring process um, today, and we're going to showcase uh, quite a lot of those to go through, and I know those of you on the call are probably Probably they're looking for new opportunities or perhaps you're actively interviewing. Um, it's something that we all do throughout our career, maybe some of us, unfortunately, more than others. Uh, but we're really hoping to set all of you up on this call to feel confident uh, going through the process, understanding, and again, being able to showcase you through the process. Um, so today we're gonna summarize for you on all of those resources, those articles, those tools suggest, but also highlight how to incorporate you into the process. Um, at the end of the day, organizations and employers don't just want an individual who can sit in the seat and do the job. We want the individual who can perform the job well, uh, add value to the team, and be thoroughly engaged with the company. And we want to be able to provide the same opportunity for you. Uh, don't you want to be somewhere where you're providing the same level of opportunity and you're being able to get that value add as well as provide your value add into an organization? So one of the things we'll be focusing on today, again, is you. Uh, so through this professional development series, we will focus on three main areas throughout our process. And that is staying true to your personal brand. <laughs> so remembering when we met with Jerry uh, quite recently, remembering what value you bring to an organization and what value you bring for a role. Uh, making sure that as you go through the process, you are setting your best foot forward for that that interview with focus on preparing properly, setting expectations for yourself, and serving as an active participant throughout the process. Um, all of this, right, to find your right fit in an organization and be able to know why you were chosen, but most importantly, why you chose the role, why you decided to set that, accept that opportunity and how you make that opportunity your own. So you'll notice here on this slide specifically, and I keep phrasing it, uh, the, the capitalized and bold term here, you. So hopefully one thing that you all know and can all speak to is yourself. Through the hiring process, it can sometimes be a little daunting, uh, changing, and trying to figure out how you can fit into the role. So as you're reviewing the job, the posting, the company, um, you may try and pivot or transition yourself to fit into a specific niche or what the company or organization is looking for. But how do we focus on what's the right fit for you? So we spend a majority of our time working and on the job site and adding value to our careers, um, don't we want to be able to obtain that level of confidence and accomplishment throughout our career and throughout that workplace, be somewhere where we can be our most authentic self and we don't dread <laughs> coming in uh, to that work site or feeling like it's not the right fit. We really want to be able to make that best impact and not lose ourselves through the process to be able to make sure it is that right fit. So while employers want to look for an individual who can do the job and add that value, we want to make sure that you yourself want to add value to that organization as well. So when we met with Jerry a few weeks ago, uh, for those of you that could attend the first professional development series uh, that we launched, we learned about our personal brand. So just a reminder, your personal brand consists of your background, assets, and the value you create for your value add, if you will. Uh, so noted in his session were the things that brand you, the things that build your credibility in others' eyes um, and capture you as that commitment 
rapid performer in the position. So as we go through today's session, you'll hear me say a lot about that personal brand that we learned about, um, that Jerry helped us create that brand statement and really put forth that personal brand. Um, but we'll also be leveraging those reminders throughout to make sure it's that right fit. Um, and as Kelly had noted, and we'll review at the end of the session as well, for those of you that were unable to attend Jerry's session on building your personal brand, it was recorded um, and we can provide more details after the session. So let's get started. So before we even dive into the interview tips and tricks, we have to get the opportunity for that interview, right? So we have to be able to understand uh, how we get our resume or application to the top of that stack. Um, but before that, even to doing some pre-work to really understand uh, what it is that we or what you are looking for in your search. So it shouldn't be any surprise, but that resume and profile, uh, and as Jerry had noted, that building your personal brand statement into your resume, into your profile, making sure it's represented well for you. It's the image that you wanna set forth, that value add, those strengths and accomplishments and attributes, as well as it's consistent across the platform. So you wanna make sure that that brand statement is built into your LinkedIn profile or perhaps um, other professional organizations profiles as well as your resume as well. So one of these is also too to make sure as you're going through your resume, make sure it's highlighting the accomplishments and results that you've obtained. Uh, it's sometimes difficult to write our descriptions for experiences that we've had and not make it a bullet point list of the job duties or all the things that we did on a day-to-day -day basis. But find a way to add those job duties and really target the success and the accomplishments that you had. So for instance, if it was a recruiting position, instead of that bullet point saying, manage jobs and filled open roles, right? Man maybe we could change it to say, manage 25 requisitions on average, successfully filling roles continuously within the year, right? Providing a little bit more on that amount of workload, the accomplishments, really trying to drive in those, that sense of the attributes or the strengths that we have, as well as that workload. And I think the biggest piece here too is making sure that you do have those keywords. So if there's specific software programs, um, any sort of specific certifications that you have, a lot of the job databases, so Indeed, LinkedIn, a lot of those job boards, help recruiters and help hiring managers by matching profiles from those resumes to those job postings with keywords. So again, using more on the language of the role and measuring those keywords or those certifications or specific skill sets that are innate to that job. I also like to note on here, a lot of times individuals say, well, I'll just wait to tell this story or to tell this piece when I get to the interview. So perhaps you have short tenure in your history of work experiences. Call out why those were short. Perhaps it was layoffs, it was an assignment ending, it was a contract um, role. Be able to point that out instead of explain, waiting to explain that when you get into the interview. Um, if you're in Columbus and you're applying for a Cincinnati job, put on your resume that you're open to relocation or perhaps if it is a hybrid or onsite, note that in your resume. Really put yourself in the hiring manager's shoes um, and understand what questions they would have when they would look at that resume, not knowing you or anything about you. Um, another point or two is look at your job titles. So here at GECU, for instance, we refer to our bankers in the branches as relationship consultants, but that term may not be as fluid or as notable within the industry. So utilizing more or leveraging more on those keywords or those that terminology within the title. So use dashes, parentheses, uh, making sure you're making it clear and concise that maybe it is a personal banker or a relationship banker. Um, however you want to identify that's most specific to that role within the industry. This is one of my favorite things to ask 
candidates to do and I myself as a recruiter is one of the questions I always ask to candidates so I had to include this on here but establish the non-negotiables before you start looking for a job if you're currently in the job search process stop and make that list if you haven't already of well, I like to refer to it as my non-negotiables so go through and figure out what you have to have in that next role and this is outside of those specific job duties but what does that environment look like maybe you're someone that has to have some sort of on-site environment or perhaps it's flexibility really set those parameters for yourself not the ideal wish list right but those things that have to be in that next opportunity that really make an impact perhaps it's um, that you need to be an individual contributor you're not really interested in managing people in the longevity or perhaps it's that you want to be able to manage people um, is it a team environment? Does it provide that flexibility? Is there coverage? So think about all of those things that you have to have on top of those job duties that you're looking for in your next position um, and really create that list. The other piece too of this is compensation. So I know a lot of research suggests or articles suggest that you should go out and do your research on Glassdoor um, and salary grade and pay grade um, and understand more about what compensation these roles can pay, but also know your own personal side of this because based on different employers and the market um, and different factors as well, is that compensation, whether it be pay compensation or benefits that you have to have in a role. Perhaps you are providing for your family and there is that minimum threshold um, of compensation or perhaps you have to have benefits um, on day one, but really establish what those non-negotiables are in your role before you're moving forward. Another one that I think st maybe stands out is a little bit different, but I suggest to individuals to be picky. Don't apply to everything that comes up across the board. Um, review the position. Look truthfully at what those job duties are. The same way that job titles may differ from company to company, these job postings differ. So you may identify with a title, but their job posting, their description may not specifically be what you're looking for. Um, and a lot of times, too, you may see where it says um, this company is looking for someone like you, right, or you're a great match for this position. Those systems tend to work again on that, those data analytics, those keywords, and sometimes it's not always right. So try to be picky, take your time to review them. Um, don't get, you know, trigger happy and just, oh, it says I'd be a good fit, so I'm going to add my application on. Um, just for example, uh, last week I got an email that said, you'd be a great fit for this position. <laughs> and so me being the just inquisitive one, decided to click and say, oh, what do you think they'd be, uh, would be a good match for me? Or perhaps it says so-and-so company is looking for someone like you, something to that effect. Um, so I selected that link. I opened the page and it said that the perfect match for me was a registered <laughs> nurse. So I hate blood. I hate guts. I hate hospital, <laughs> all of those um, items. And I thought, well, this really missed the mark here. But I started thinking about it later on. I was like, I wonder what that job posting said, or I wonder what kind of led that connection. So I opened their job posting. And of course, it said something to the effect of building relationships, providing care, establishing relations with customers and with partners. And I think that's more on those competencies or behaviors that I had noted in my profile that seem to be a match but of course it wasn't a match um there you know the business professional the hr that strategic piece um wasn't specifically that match to that registered nurse position so again don't just jump the gun on hey this would be a good fit and apply for everything another piece too is a lot of individuals can see when you have applied for a lot of jobs especially if you're applying for jobs that are part of a parent company or through a specific uh, job posting database, they can see other roles that you've applied for. And you want to be able to know that the candidate that has applied for your position is interested in your company, in your role, in your team. Um, and then shift your resume where needed. So you can also compare your resume to the posting, kind of understand a little bit more where you have room for growth, those preferred and required uh, posting details. You can kind of see where you can align, uh, where those transferable skills may lie. But the other piece of this too is that you can shift your resume and add pieces on um, as well. 
So for instance, you may be somebody who's seeking a role in a customer facing role and your resume may say customer service oriented. And then you saw a posting for a relationship consultant for GECU and it says member experience focused. And you can think to yourself, oh, I really like the way that that's framed. Or I wanna include that in some piece in here. So it shifts and it stands out to that hiring manager. Be able to shift those items. Again, working on those keywords does typically help those recruiters and those hiring managers. So having the words member, customer, client, all in that resume really can help pick up and leverage um, different components as well. Speaking of leveraging things, leverage those connections. So Jerry had told us and talked to us a lot about networking um, when we met with him a few weeks ago and really utilizing those connections and thinking outside of the scope. But I think it's important to realize too that if you have interest in a specific organization or organizations, reach out to them directly, go to their job boards, go to those individuals, um, find those recruiters on LinkedIn for that specific role. Uh, don't be afraid to be vulnerable, to acknowledge what you're looking for, acknowledge you're not happy in your current, um, your current organization, or perhaps that you are open um, and not currently working. Be able to reach out and make those connections. Um, and look outside of the job boards, look outside of those typical places that you would um, think too about connecting with a recruiter. So recruiters are in the business of making connections and networking. Don't be afraid to reach out to them first. Don't wait for them to reach out to you. They are in the business of wanting to make those partnerships happen. Um, they do have a lot of connections. Even if they're in a different industry, they may be able to connect you to somebody else. Um, with those jobs as well, if, if you again are thinking about moving towards somewhere that it has um, applicable roles within different organizations, be, don't be afraid to explore those. So perhaps you're going in, uh, you like being in a specific niche, but you're going in to make a deposit at a GECU branch uh, and you have that great experience there. Ask that individual that you're talking with that works there who they know if they have any experience, um, how they enjoy working there. Is there any way that they can give a referral? So don't be afraid to kind of think outside of those job boards as you're starting to look and be mindful of who has connections and it could be places that you don't think about at all. So I know these are a lot of things to think about. Um, hopefully these feelings of excitement and empowerment truly really begin. Um, you're really getting excited to embark on the process, but let's remember to also set expectations so we're not getting burnt out in the process. Um, again, this market is ever changing, so it's impactful uh, to be mindful on the market and employers, what employers are facing, but it also allows us to give ourselves grace and pause through the process um, to kind of avoid that burnout, to reset the expectations and understand and know um, more about the process. So one thing to really acknowledge is that there's active and passive candidates that employers are currently working and waging through uh, to find that top talent or that top applicant. So in the past few years, we've really seen an increase in those passive candidates. So those, just for those of you that are on the call as well, those active candidates are those ones that are actively applying to the job, active in the job market, um, ready and willing to start a new role. Um, and that passive candidate on the other end of the spectrum are those individuals that are not openly looking. Um, they may entertain that phone call. They may be persuaded uh, to have that opportunity or talk about that opportunity. And there's different varying degrees of candidates within those two spectrums. And so one thing that is impactful to recognize too is that employers are trying to wage through who's really passionate and active about wanting to work here um, and who maybe is just kind of exploring other opportunities. Uh, and remembering too that in a lot of organization there's that job that's posted may be just one seat and there may be hundreds of applicants. So it's important to remind this too, and I don't want to try and seem negative, but it's important to keep in perspective that employers may only have one option to hire, but they also may be getting applicants that they're having to go through, those passive type candidates, um, or maybe even too, as we had talked about those, this is a perfect fit for you, and those individuals just apply, and it's really not something that they're looking for. We as employers, hiring managers, recruiters are having to wage through a lot of those applicants coming through. So 
just be prepared that when they do say they're going through applications, it's not just a pause. They also have their jobs on top of this um, and are trying to recruit. And while it's a priority, it may not be as timely as you had initially set out or how they had set their expectations to be. So it's just mindful to be, especially in this, in this instance, with a lot of employers starting to look and wage through those applications. Um, be prepared. So if you're not somebody who typically asks questions or asks for clarification, be, get, start getting prepared to do that because a lot of a lot of employers have different processes. They are exploring new territories and new avenues. Um, so start getting prepared to ask questions um, to make yourself more knowledgeable about the different types of interviews coming as well. Uh, so there's a lot of different types of processes, again, especially to kind of wage through those applications coming through or to understand a little bit more um, to help alleviate those hiring managers. There's a lot of different processes and steps, um, systems, tools and resources that are being rolled out that employers are piloting or testing as part of their process. So just to be mindful, here's a few that you'll probably see more frequently, um, but individuals do tend to use, or employers do tend to use those phone screens still. Uh, so it could just be that quick touch base to understand what you're looking for, to understand or explain a little bit more about the role that they have, to explain those nuances, um, ask questions that weren't pointed out in your resume, right? Hey, you applied for this job in Cincinnati, but I see you're in the Columbus area. Are you open to relocation? So those phone um, screens or phone interviews are still going on. Um, and be mindful too, to be able to prepare to set up that voicemail box, make sure it's not full, make sure your greeting's appropriate. So there's certain things you can do to prepare for those type of phone interviews or phone screens as well. There's also the on-site and in-person um, that are still hanging around. I know we've moved to this virtual world, but a lot of the jobs that will be in-person or hybrid, most positions are still doing some sort of on-site interviewing in some form or fashion. So note that, prepare yourself that there will be that travel time. Um, prepare yourself that they tend to take a different shape. So that panel interviewing um, is still occurring in most places where you may have multiple interviewers, uh, but there's also stacking of interviews. So instead of having a panel of interviews with five individuals uh, in front of you as you interview, there may be three mini interviews that you have with two or one individual at a time. Um, so they have 30 minutes for one individual and then the indiv that interview leaves and then the next interviewer comes in to interview you. So again, just to be prepared um, that everybody has that different step of process. The video interviewing has obviously picked up in the past few years and that's through Teams, through Zoom, um, making sure that you're prepared, knowing how to leverage your technology do you have a web camera? Uh, are you planning on using your phone? Make sure you have the downloaded apps appropriate. So if they want to have that interview sooner rather than later, you're all prepared to do that. Um, there's also recorded interviews um, gaining popularity as well. And that is where to screen a lot of uh, candidates out or to kind of do those pre-screening, instead of doing phone screens, there's recorded interviews where they could set you send, set you up with um, a question and then you record your answer and it gets submitted to them. Um, so making sure that you're just, again, have the right setup. Um, those typically are video, sound, making sure that you have a quiet space, um, but just being prepared that that could be an, the immediate step initial step in the process. Um, artificial intelligence is also gaining uh, some popularity. I think a lot of employers are trying to test this out and see where it could be useful in their process um, to really pre-screen and move forward with candidates. And then behavioral assessments are still um, really trending as well, where employers are looking to see those competencies within the role or the competencies that the candidate has to match to the role. Uh, and in this, I love to t just put my little two cents is don't try and cheat the behavioral assessments. <laughs> uh, it is based on you. It's based on your competencies. Um, they are, these assessments are written to try and gauge your fit for the position. So if you were going for a member service type role and you had selected 
Um, let's say the prompt is, I never get frazzled or stressed when dealing with angry customers. And you put 10 out of 10, never get frustrated. Um, you know, 10 out of 10 times, I can always make the member happy. We know that that may be an unachievable <laughs> level. If that's you, that's great, but it may come through the system um, as not being properly reliable um, or that the individual's responses may not be reliable. So just note on those behavioral assessments to do them as accurately as you can um, because they are looking at the range. They're not looking for 100% on the behavioral assessment. They're looking to how it matches to the role. And the biggest thing about this is preparing for the process is also making sure that you understand your schedule. Uh, recruiters, employers, hiring managers, um, they all understand that you may be working, that you may only have certain windows of time, that you can take certain phone calls or set interviews. So be mindful of your schedule Pro ahead of time, maybe carve out some of those times um, just in the instance that you can return those phone calls. Uh, those returned phone calls or those phone screens via the stairwell in your current office may not present the greatest opportunity to be able to respond back um, to the individual you're talking with. So hopefully um, this prepares you for the process, but let's lead into those interviews uh, once you're getting prepared to go into that interview. So the navigating through the ins and the outs uh, can be a little daunting. And again, there's many resources out there, uh, tools, articles, um, all kinds of things that can help you leverage uh, practice and put your best foot forward. So I like to keep it basic here, but really try and ensure what's most impactful in these suggestions. So first and foremost, you read anywhere, I'll tell you to do your research. And I always like to say, do enough research. You don't need to know all the ins and outs of the business, but know enough that you know what their business is, what their customer base is. Um, have they been in the news recently? Are they a top employer? Um, also understand more on their website and other, um, their LinkedIn page, what their values are. Is it exhibited throughout their website and their LinkedIn page that they give back to the community? Is that the presence that they pre present forward? Um, so know enough that you can go in there confidently and recognize that business. Um, you know, I think sometimes individuals do a lot of research and then maybe get businesses confused or kind of forget or so focused on bringing that research in that they're then not focused on the conversation. Practice out loud. <laughs> so I think another piece of this too is that they tell you to practice. Here's some suggested interview questions and Indeed and LinkedIn and a lot of other resources have great guides with those suggested interview questions. But I think the biggest piece of this is don't focus on just the question, focus on the response. So as Jerry had walked us through previously is focus on that STAR response method, the situation, task, action, result. Being able to showcase not just what the problem was, but the result, the action that you had and the results that it had within that. Um, be able to review your strengths and accomplishments. So again, not specifically the question, but what strengths and accomplishments and attributes do you want portrayed as you provide those answers to the questions? Know your value in the role. So again, um, know how you fit into the role, but know what, else, what value you can provide and that value add that you can provide. A great um, suggestion too is to match your resume to the posting, put them side by side. Take a blank piece of paper, split it in half and do what matches and what doesn't match. Um, know where there may be learning curves for you, but understand really where um, your attributes or your successes map to that job description, that job posting that they had. And remember your personal brand as well. So remember, again, those attributes that you have deemed were specific to your brand. Dress rehearsal. So everyone, again, so we talked about the practice, um, but I think it's really important to think about all the obstacles for that day. So we went through the different types of interviews, but is it technology? Is it traffic? Um, is it finding a quiet space? So for instance, your interview is at 10 o'clock and that garbage truck always comes at 10 o'clock on Tuesdays and your dog loves to say hello to the garbage truck man driving past, you know, 
Think about, is there a more quiet place that I can take this away from the window or away from the dog? Um, think about all of those obstacles. If you can, do your dress rehearsal that same day, same time, if, or at least the same time of day so you can understand some of those nuances. Um, if it's an on-site interview, try driving at that time of day, um, trying your clothes on ahead of time, all of those items to really put yourself in that mindset and then do your practice in that same type of um, atmosphere. Don't come empty handed. So bring your resume, updated resume, notebooks, pens. I always like to say bring water, bring your coffee, but bring what you need to be comfortable. Um, I think a lot of times individuals just wanna show up without anything so that they're not imposing, but bring what you need uh, to feel comfortable, whether that's work samples or products of your work history, um, letters of recommendations, anything that you can hand off or showcase um, that will be helpful to you in that process. Organize specific questions. <laughs> so again, get your questions ahead of time, um, but be, make sure that they're specific, they're thoughtful and they're detailed. So instead of asking, what does onboarding look like? Maybe ask it more specifically in, what is the first 30 days for this position look like? Um, ask more poignant questions that are applicable to you and the group. So instead of asking, for instance, what the company's strategic goals are for the next three years, maybe you focus on what's one goal that this position has in the next year. Really focus on your audience and who those interviewers are, as well as this position and why it's applicable to you. So essentially don't ask questions, just ask questions. Ask the questions that are gonna be helpful to making sure that it's the right fit for you. Be authentic and be you. So leading into your best interview, remember that it, you're there to showcase you. Remember to laugh, to smile, to ask questions, but remember to bring in those pieces, those attributes, all of this that we've talked about um, that's innate to you to make sure it's a great fit, um, to be able to show yourself in the best light. So now that we've talked about leading into that interview and you're in that interview, how do you showcase yourself? So I think the biggest piece of the interview process is ensuring you're an active participant. So these days, the interview is not just ask questions, answer, and then that's it, right? Most interviewers are gonna want a conversation. They're gonna wanna see your personality and this is your time to shine. This is your time to really showcase you. So it's important to kind of follow some of these reminders just to make sure that you're showcasing you in the best light. Um, again, organizations, a lot of those questions are geared towards understanding the dynamic you may bring to the team. So it's impactful to stay positive um, that sometimes there is natural conflict uh, in the office, there's natural conflict within teams. Uh, not all experiences and organizations in our past were positive, but being able to stay positive, to answer those transparently, uh, but also not fall into the trap of being negative or speaking dramatically about coworkers, um, but to stay factual, but to also stay positive. Um, I think too, making sure you're not covering up everything, but being able to showcase how you stayed positive or stayed above the fray in that position or that opportunity that you're showcasing. Show you're a great fit for the organization and the position. So remember, employers are looking for someone to do the job and add value to the team and organization. So be sure to show how extracurriculars or accomplishments that can play well into the team dynamic or how certain interests you have in the next opportunity you have provides value in the long term. This is also a great way to bring in those answers or those questions that we had talked about um, to deliver the answers that they had provided to you or the research back. So, for instance, if you saw that they were great, um, that they have a huge influence on the community, be able to bring that back into the interview. Um, be able to note that that's impactful for you and you're also involved in the community. I think this is pretty straightforward, but be confident, right? Uh, not cocky, just confident. Be sure to showcase your best self. Um, stand out by showing your ability to, to make mistakes, to take accountability, um, but also know where your development is. Um, being confident doesn't mean you're always right. A lot of times to an interviewer, a recruiter, a hiring manager, it's impactful to see that they were confident in overcoming whatever that situation is. So being transparent and saying, it didn't work out the way I anticipated, but I learned that I could be 
coachable. I learned that I could adapt. Um, it may not initially put you in the best light, but remember that star response method of showing what action you took and the result that it had. Um, so I think that ability to show adaptability in a confident light um, and that sometimes we do make mistakes and we can take accountability for it as well. Um, capitalize on the need. So capitalize on why that job is vacant. So one of your questions can also be what, you know, why is this position open in the first place? And then you can also capitalize on your adaptability to change if it's a new role. Or if it's a replacement for a position, you can showcase your loyalty and dependability to an organization. Think of this through the hiring manager's eyes on what other skills are needed in relation to the job. Um, again, I think this one's pretty straightforward, but body language. So stay focused on what they're saying. Don't be so focused on the next question that you're not listening to them. Acknowledge what they're saying. Feel free to ask those questions back. Um, but I think one of the biggest things is we understand as interviewers, as hiring managers and recruiters that it's nerve wracking going through the process. Um, it's OK to be nervous, but it's all about how you react in that situation. Um, so if you're constantly staring at the clock or staring at the floor, it doesn't really bode that great interaction. Um, but another way to ease up, too, is to really have that um, eye contact to acknowledge and really present that proper body language throughout the interview process. And last but not least, be thoughtful. So be really purposeful in your delivery, um, but also be, it's okay to uh, ask questions. It's okay to ask for a moment uh, to prepare your example. So if they pose you a question, um, it's okay to say, um, I haven't thought about that. Give me just a moment and to take a moment to reflect. Uh, it's okay to respond back to their question for asking for clarity. Um, so again, be thoughtful, um, be purposeful in the delivery and the response. And after that interview ceases um, or starts to wrap up, really leave them with something that stands out and remember your personal brand. So instead of just getting up from the interview and saying, thanks, I appreciate your time and exiting, leave them with some parting words, leave them with the right takeaway to remember you and being able to bring it back to that personal brand statement. So again, if it was something in your personal brand statement that said, um, you know, the next opportunity, I want to be a part of a growth. I want to have a new opportunity. Uh, perhaps you could bring it back to it's truly exciting what GECU has to offer. I'm hopeful I can be a part of its growth. Uh, so or maybe your personal brand is to be a valued member of a team. And that's one of your non-negotiables is to be part of a team. Then you can also add in that takeaway. I'd love to help deliver more as part of the team. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing back from you. Something that kind of draws it back to and leaves them with that good conclusion. And you have those final words um, to, for them to part with. And then the follow up, make it your follow up. So ensure you send the thank you or you reach back out um, and ensure it's comprehensive and specific. Bring it back to the comments made or the joke that was made or something that happened in your interview that you can show that you had um, specific goals mentioned, the comments made, and make it specific to them that leaves them wanting more or desiring more about what you, what you learned from the example. So, you know, it was great to hear about the goals for this position, and I'm excited. One of those goals is to roll out a new software program because I really want to be a part of that, right? Or I think my background um, in HR can really bode well in this specific position because. So it doesn't need to be a buck, but make sure you're bringing it back so that those points that were brought up in the interview are almost refreshers for the hiring manager. Uh, one of the things, too, is remember those non-negotiables. It's OK. Don't be afraid to pull yourself out of the running. So if you get through the interview process and maybe that job just doesn't feel right anymore, or something about those that list of non-negotiables just isn't sitting as well or doesn't vote as well, it's OK to pull yourself out of the running and be transparent with the hiring manager and the recruiter, or whoever your contact is. So for, for instance, if it is a remote position and it was important for you to be on site, bring that up and say, you know, I really enjoyed meeting with the hiring manager in this position. I'm really excited about this position, but I don't think it's the right fit because. And be transparent with them, but I think also to an 
opens their eyes to the opportunity as to why it wouldn't be a good fit. We want to make sure that it's the right fit for us moving forward, but we also want to make sure it's the right fit for them. And they may even pivot or change or follow up with, hey, I have another opportunity or year right, we've been thinking this position really should be on site. Um, so be transparent throughout the process um, be able to acknowledge uh, when something doesn't check all those boxes on your non-negotiable list. <laughs> and sometimes the position doesn't work out um, or you're not selected, but be kind and calm if you're not selected. And I know this sounds silly, but you go through all the process and you go through all the steps and it can be daunting and it can be exhausting. And it's important to remember uh, that even if you're not selected to be kind, be calm, be professional as you're being closed out. So acknowledge the fact that you were disappointed, um, but wish the best. Um, keep those networks open. You never know if you were that runner up candidate and the first candidate, something falls through with them. Um, you'll never really know what other positions may op or open up in the future. Um, so there may always be these pipelines uh, that employers have, and it may not be in a specific position. So again, once these requisitions come available, Hiring managers, recruiters, we immediately think of everybody we've talked to that has that type of skill set or even that personality. So because you've been through the process, it may not be a waste. Individuals, those employers may call you back or be able to keep that network open in case an opportunity comes up in the immediate future. So I know the process can be daunting and exhausting at times, um, but it's important to remember the impact that you can have on an organization and on that team. And that you wanna find a team that values everything that you bring. And sometimes that exhaustive process is worth finding that perfect fit. Um, so once you receive that perfect fit and you find that position, you can then focus on mastering your time within that role. So our next step um, is to really invite you to join us for our next series, which is mastering your first days in a new role to really seize that opportunity. All right. Thank you so much, Marissa, for helping us to understand a little bit more about the interview process and tips we can keep in mind to help showcase our best self. Um, and for everyone who's joining us today, as Marissa mentioned, today was part two of our three-part series. So we will have Mastering Your First 90 Days two weeks from today. Um, and if you missed your personal brand, that was our first session, um, you can watch the YouTube video that is hosted up on our web uh, YouTube page um, and can be found through our events page. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into the Q&A portion of today's webinar. So if you have any questions that you've thought of during the content um, or have any questions about interviewing or tips or anything along those lines, go ahead and submit that using your question feature um, in your GoToWebinar control panel. We did have a couple pre-submitted questions, so I'll go ahead and start with those um, and we'll get to as many as we can in our time today. So our first question, Marissa, says, how can I calm my nerves prior to an interview? <laughs> so I think the nerves are reasonable. And I think for, let me just state that first and foremost, is I think that that bodes that authentic self. Sometimes you will be a little nervous um, going in and employers are aware of that. But I think one of the best ways to kind of bypass as much of the nerves as you can is to be prepared. So it's going back through and going through those strengths, those attributes, again, matching that resume up with the posting, um, seeing where those opportunities where you can bring value to the organization um, and really being able to present yourself in the best light. But being prepared, I think, is probably the best way to calm some of those nerves. Our next question is in regard to chat GPT, it's asking, can I utilize chat GPT to practice for interviews? I think there's a lot of resources out there to practice for interviews. Um, and I don't think there's any wrong way. Um, I remember I recorded myself for some of my interviews just so that I could see how my body language was focusing. I talk a lot with my hands. So it made me remember to maybe take a step back on that or be more mindful of that. So I don't think that there's any wrong way to practice for the interviews, whatever is gonna set you up um, to really prepare yourself in the best light. 
Our next question is asking, how can I stand out among other candidates? I think the best way to stand out um, and that we see coming through is the candidates that are able to make a connection with the hiring manager or the recruiter. Um, and I think the best way to do that is to, again, be your authentic self, um, to be able to ask the right questions, um, to be able to ask for clarification when needed, uh, to be competent in the process, but to really be your most authentic self. Because at the end of the day, you want them to hire them, hire you for you. And again, not just the body to do the job, but be able to add that dynamic value to the team. And then do you have any tips for candidates who have to go through multiple interviews for one position? Like, Should they be um, referring to the same thing in each interview or switching things up or just any insight along those lines? Yeah, so I think this goes back to understanding that employers are waging through a lot of applicants um, to understand that the, while it is sometimes exhausting to go through all of the steps, they're really trying to find the best candidate for their role. I think if the candidate is meeting with the same individual in mul multiple instances, um, you can refer back to conversations you've had previously. You know, as we discussed before, my background, and you don't have to give the full example, um, but I think you can highlight that. If you're meeting with new interviewers, uh, feel free to use those same examples or to bring up um, situations that you've previously brought up as well. I think throughout the process, um, to also ask questions. So it's okay to ask the recruiter, or whoever your contact is, to say, you know, what does the full process entail? How many interviews ideally are they looking for until they decide to make an offer to a candidate? Um, again, asking for that clarification and understanding so you can prepare yourself for the next steps. And it looks like we have just a couple more questions. Um, the next one being, what are some ways to sound confident during an interview? <laughs> I think the, um, the ways to say confident is to be prepared with those strengths and attributes. And I can't say it enough. I feel like I'm probably answering it the same way every time. But I think the best thing to do is to prepare yourself with those strengths, those attributes, that personal brand of what you want to convey. Um, one thing we all should know is ourselves uh, more than anything. So talking about yourself, talking about your experiences, but also talking about opportunities that you have for development um, is really a way to stand out. Um, to be confident and comfortable and knowing, you know, where you have opportunities and also where you excel. Our next question is in regards to different formats for answering questions. Is there a best practice? Um, I think this is maybe referring to the STAR method. Um, is that the best one to use? Are there others or how should those answers be structured? So I think the STAR method is easily followable. Um, I think the situation task action result is an easy way to kind of ensure that you're hitting all of the proper responses when providing um, the answer to the question. But I think in some instances, the STAR method is not always going to act, right? So those questions or that response method is geared more towards situational questions. Um, there may be better responses. Uh, so use your best judgment. Again, it doesn't have to be question answer in some of these interview settings. Obviously, for the recorded one, um, those type of interviews, it's typically question answer. But I think for those where you're interacting with someone else, making it more conversation based as much as you can. I think employers appreciate that. Recruiters appreciate that. Um, but being able to kind of just give responses, provide that transparency. Uh, provide you know, where you want to be, how that situation or that question applies for your next opportunity as well. Um, so I, don't, I think the STAR method is great for situational based uh, interviewing, but for other questions, you kind of just have to make sure that you're asking the proper question. And again, it's okay to answer a question and say, did that answer your question <laughs> appropriately? And asking more for clarification as well. And this is going to be our last question. It's asking, how can I work to make an interview more conversational? I think showing that authentic self and being more personable allows the interviewer to take that approach as well. Um, so I think opening, you know, one of the 
first questions is typically, tell me about yourself. Tell me about what brings you to looking for a new position. Tell me about why this position. Um, a lot of those, we may have our personal brand statements or a very detailed pre-written response to, making that more personable to you. Um, adding a smile, adding a joke, adding not a, you know, um, a knock knock joke, but adding a little bit more of laughter or putting conversation into that delivery is helpful. And you know that those questions are, I would say, majority of how interviews open. All right. Thank you, Marissa. That is going to conclude today's webinar. Thank you all so much for joining us this afternoon and have a great rest of your day.